Well, good evening, good people. Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. It has been a hellacious day. I have got so many trolls that are coming through. I've got fans that are pissed off at me, that blame me, that say, you wanted Dak Prescott. Everybody wants, you know, somebody to be tarred and feather from Jerry Jones to Mike McCarthy to Dak Prescott. Everybody is just going crazy. Now, you know, shout out to my wife, my wonderful wife, who is making shirts. This is truly the perfect shirt. Cowboys life sentence because it feels like we are in jail. We are in cell block C with the Dallas Cowboys. And it is life sentence. Too old to change teams. So as we dissect the body and go on, because I, you know, I can't, I can't abandon ship. I'm too I'm too deep in it, okay? You see all the Cowboys paraphernalia around here. All the money, the time, the effort. The day after day that I do talking about the Dallas Cowboys. So, I'm going to be living this life sentence till the day I die. So, we have to figure out what the hell is going on. You know, my whole thing has always been you let your play on the field do your talking for you. If you do things right, they're going to give you the credit that you deserve. But that's not today's day and age. Everything is, you know, we're going to tell you what we're going to do. And that's too much with our Cowboys. The part of our problem is, is we're always them boys. We're always there being talked about. And what it has done is created this animosity against the Dallas Cowboys and everything they do where everybody wants to punch us in the mouth. They look around and say, why don't we get the publicity that they do? They're no better than us. Let's go show them that we're just as good or better and they kick our teeth in. And yet they still talk about us. And now we've got Micah Parsons' show. And I watched some of it live today. And listening, you know, it's great when you win. Oh, he'll tell you about all the wonderful things that we've done and we them boys and everything else. But it's a different animal when you get your teeth kicked in. And so I'm watching it and he's got the live comments in the chats and they are just joking us. They're joking Micah. Now I'm used to them joking me because, you know, I'm just, you know, Mark in my basement. Right now, I kind of wish I was in my mama's basement. But as I'm listening to this, as I'm listening to the first five minutes of it, Micah kind of throws the coaches under the bus. And I want you to listen to the beginning of it. I've got to fast forward after it. I, I click it over because it's got his intro. But when you say... We weren't put in a position to succeed. That's something I say all the time about the coaches. The coach's job is to put you in a position to succeed. He says this in there, not once, but twice. To me, that's throwing the coaches under the bus. Let's take a listen here. This is it's, it's a nice looking set. It's beautiful. I wish my shit looked that good. Welcome back to The Edge with your boy, Micah Parsons, live on the Bleacher Report app. And let's get right into the game yesterday. I know you guys have a bunch of questions, and it's just one of the ones, and we should just get right to it. Drop your questions, and I'll answer them into the chat. And, yes, I'll repeat because I've seen um, some various, you know, people quoting what I said. Like I said, I don't think the 49ers are at a way higher level than us. Um and I said we need to reconsider and fix some things. And when I say that is, if you look at the game and we talk about the Cowboys and who we want to be and how great we want to be, 
uh, it, it just wasn't there all around in all phases of the game. And it was like, I feel like almost we weren't put in position to succeed in some there instances. And like, I just feel like we beat ourselves. As you look at the game, you know, I jumped off sides and they recover and we recover a fumble. You know, later that drive, they score seven. Um, you look at the third and five, we get a stop and they call off sides on uh, J-Ron. Uh, you you look at the third and four, and you know that drive end up leading to seven points. You look at um, another drive where you know Wanya Thomas and Donovan Wilson make a great play, and McCaffrey drops it, and they call uh, leading with the helmet, and that led to another first down, which led to seven. It was so many various things that was like man, like it was like we were beating ourselves, and then it was like you add the rest into it, and then it was just. It, it just is what it is. It was just one of them games, and it's like you got to learn from it. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, if you look at the talent scale from each one, um, I mean, I like you. I think we match up well with them. I just don't think we played to the same standard they played with yesterday. And it started with, you know, the preparation. I, you know, you go into any type of fight, you go into any type of game, and you would think, like, man, like, we're ready, but you know they had every counterattack. Uh, they out schemed us, and that's just the truth of it. You know they was prepared for everything we was in, uh, everything we was prepared to do, and we just didn't help ourselves at that. So you know, my hats off to Kyle Shanahan and how he prepared. Um, I definitely think he was prepared for us, and uh, I don't think that you know we were positioned, we were put in a position to be prepared for what they have. Um, so you know that's kind of how I feel about it, but I think. The big fixes is, you know, what some of our fixes is, we got to eliminate the penalties. The penalties is starting to get bad in the league. Um, you know, it's an offensive league right now. Um, and there's not, it's not, it's not being true defense play right now. It's hard to play true defense out in the NFL right now. Um, obviously, we need to get better. Um, we can't give up big plays. Too many explosive plays we gave up in that game. Um, and we need to, we need, I think I could leave it right there because, yeah, I mean, he, he put blame all the way around. But when you say we weren't prepared, we weren't put in a position. And you say we weren't put in a position not once but twice. That's not the players. The player's job is not to be put in a position. Now, he does take blame. He does admit that we made penalties, we made mistakes and things like that. But he is definitely pointing right there at the coaches and saying, we weren't prepared. We had things we weren't expecting. We weren't put into a position to succeed. It's subtle. It's very, very subtle. But he just threw the coaching staff under the bus and then backed it up. So I don't know where the team goes from here. There's still 12 more games. You know, we will beat a lot of teams out there because we them boys and we always will get a game, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll do well in our division and um, right the ship, you know, and beat the Giants and beat the Commanders and get a bunch of wins, stack those up and things. But, you know, we've got to come up with something different than what we're doing. And right now, I have to say that Mike McCarthy's offense is a failure. We've got to do a lot more than what we're doing right now. It is just not happening. So there you have it, guys. We'll be definitely talking about this uh, tonight. We'll be live streaming uh, the Monday night game, and we'll be doing a pity party. And again, it is Cowboys life sentence because this feels like we in jail. And as always, I appreciate you guys.